which is what we have here. Okay, now, um, as I briefly mentioned before, in order to be able to use Feynman's trick within here, we have to um, make sure that the dominated convergence theorem is satisfied, and it is actually satisfied for this integrand. As I've said in other videos, I'm not laboring too much on that at this point of time because I'm worried it may overwhelm people by going into that. Um, but as these videos become more advanced, or if, if you would like to see an explanation of why the integrand satisfies the dominated convergence theorem, then I can do an extension video to this to illustrate that as well. So please uh, let me know in a comment or send me a message and I will do that. Okay, so the next step, as I mentioned at the beginning, is we're going to, in this situation, um, in other videos I've used Laplace transforms, which requires Fubini theorem. In this case, I'm actually going to use a derivative operator. And um, in order to do that, I'm going to take the derivative under the curve um, with respect to t. Um, and in order to be able to do that, we need to fall onto Leibniz integral rule. And again, the um, conditions that are required for Leibniz integral rule to be um, utilized are actually satisfied with the integrand and the integral bounds that we've got. Just as with the dominated convergence, if you would like to see a video um, explaining that in detail, please let me know in a comment or a direct message. Okay, so we take the derivative with respect to t. And by Leibniz integral rule, we're able to take the derivative of an integral and make it the integral of the derivative. You'll see again, it goes from a full de or yeah, a full derivative to a partial derivative. That's because when we push it into the integrand, we're dealing with two variables as opposed to one. Okay, and I've made a mistake here, another mistake, my apologies. This should be a one over. This derivative here, we're taking um, the partial derivative is with respect to t. So everything in terms of u needs to be brought out the front. So there should be a one here. And we've got the partial derivative of arc tan of t u d u, which is a really simple one to implement. So this becomes the integral from naught to infinity of one over u u squared plus one. This is just what we had before. And then just applying the chain rule, the um, derivative of arc tan of u, um, arc tan of t u is one over u t squared plus one, Dot u. And again, remember the property that I was mainly interested in here is that in utilizing the derivative here, which requires a chain rule, which gives us that dot u, this u here will cancel out with that u there. And that's fantastic because that's a problem. Okay, so putting it all together, we have the integral from 0 to infinity of 1 over u squared plus 1 times by u squared t squared plus 1 du. In this form here, this is a very difficult integral. I'm not sure whether or not it could be done directly um, exactly as it is. There may be a substitution that resolves it down. But thankfully, if we look at the individual components, we have two fractions that have been multiplied together here. Individually, they're actually really simple to integrate. So the beauty with the um, formulation that we have within here is that we can apply a partial fraction decomposition and it will separate them out into, individual com into their individual components and so we can evaluate them individually very easily. So this is the partial fraction decomposition. Um, just as with everything else, if you would like a video explaining those steps, please let me know and I'll do an extension video to cover that. But we have this, this term here becomes the integral from 0 to infinity of 1 over t squared plus 1, t squared over u squared t squared plus 1, minus 1 over u squared plus 1. And as I said, we've taken it from a product state and we've put it into a sum. And the beautiful thing about doing that is with the linearity property of um, integration, we can then evaluate these individually. Okay, so... Remember the t squared stuff, this is um, this integral is with respect to u, so these t, 1 over t squared minus 1, and all of the t components for that matter, they are essentially constants, so we can drag it out the front, which is what we've done here. And so now we're just going to evaluate each component individually. We have t squared, which is the component here, and the integral of 1 over u squared t squared plus 1 is equal to 1 over t arc tan of ut. If you're unsure about um, how to formulate that, let u equal tan of theta divided by t and you'll be able to get your uh, solution very easily. Similarly, if you want to be able to integrate this, let u equal tan theta, and you'll find that it equals arc tan of u. Again, if you'd like to see a video with that, let me know. Okay, and so we need to evaluate this at the bounds of infinity, and then also at zero. So the first thing I've just done over here is just cleaned it up a little bit. Obviously, t squared divided by t is just t, so we just have this term here. Now, when we're applying the um, upper bound, um, the lower bound doesn't matter because arc tan of u will always be u, so this t term here isn't going to affect the outcome in any way. But with the upper bound of infinity here, if t is a positive value, it is a different value if t was a negative value. So in this situation here, as we went through above, here we are forced t to be a positive value. 
Now, just so you know, we could let t be a negative value, but we would have to be aware of that. And then instead of having a positive result, the positive results come out of it, it would be negative and they cancel out. So as the expression is, all paths lead to Rome in this situation. Nevertheless, here we know that t is positive. So that when I put infinity into here, we know it's a positive quantity and not a negative quantity. <coughs> Excuse me. So arc tan of infinity is just pi over 2. So we have t times by pi over 2 minus pi over 2. So arc tan of infinity here minus and then plugging in 0. Arc tan of 0 is 0. So both of these terms just become 0. Obviously t times 0 is 0, which is what we have here. So this term completely dis uh, disappears. And what we have here is just doing it in a couple of steps. The 1 over t squared minus 1 remains. Here we see that we have, if we drag out the pi over 2, we have that here. And what's left over is a t term here and a 1 term here. So we've got t minus 1. Okay, so 1 over t squared minus 1. So just completing the square is 1 over t minus 1 times by t plus 1. And then what remains from what we had before is t minus 1 times by pi over 2. So obviously this t minus 1 over this t minus 1 cancels out. Now, <clears throat> um, so my apologies, sorry. What is left over is 1 over t plus 1 times by pi over 2. Okay, fantastic. So now what we've done, as I said, we um, created this new function and we applied an operator to it. In this case, we applied a differential operator. So we differentiated un under the curve with respect to t and we we're able to then integrate that transformation and we get this result. In order to be able to get the result that we initially were after, we need to take the inversion of this operator. So the inversion, obviously, of differentiation is integration. So we're now going to integrate with respect to t. Okay, so j of t is equal to the integral of 1 over t plus 1 times by pi over 2, which is the term we have here. Dragging the pi over 2 out the front, we just have the integral of 1 over t plus 1, which is just pi over 2 times by ln of t plus 1. You notice I haven't put the absolute value in, and that's because I know, in this case, because t is a positive value, t plus 1 will always be a positive value, so we can take the natural logarithm of it. But if t was a value that could be negative, we would have to make this absolute. So just so you're aware, you can't just use the normal brackets when it comes to um, logarithms in any case. You need to make sure that you're forcing upon it that it is a positive quantity. In this case it is, so we don't have to be worried about it. And then we've got this plus c term, where c is just your generic um, constant, of constant sorry, of integration. Okay, so now we've got j of t, but the problem is we've got this unknown constant, so we need to be able to resolve that. Now, just like within a lot of differential equation problems, you use an initial value or a boundary condition in order to be able to solve it. So one that I'm going to use here, and it, you need not actually have to use this exact value, I have chosen it very deliberately because I, it's the easiest case, is we know that j of t is equal to this term. This is how we defined it here. So now, <coughs> excuse me. T is a positive um, value, so greater than or equal to zero. So that means it holds for zero. Now, the reason why I've chosen zero very deliberately, deliberately here as a special case is by having arc ten of zero times by u. Obviously, anything multiplied by zero is just zero, and arc ten of zero is zero. So that means that this term becomes zero. So zero multiple, uh, well, divided by these terms is just zero. So we have the integral from naught to infinity of zero, which is just zero. That's just integrating across the x-axis or the, oh, the u-axis, I should say, here. Okay, so we know that j of naught is equal to naught. So we're going to use that knowledge in order to be able to use our other expression for j of t, which we found using this method here, in order to be able to resolve this c term. So j of naught, which equals naught, as we just found here, is equal to pi over 2, just substituting 0 in here, ln of pi over 2 times by ln of 0 plus 1. So that means we're left with ln of 1, ln of 1 is just 0, so we have 0 plus c. So if we have a look at our expression here, we've got 0 is equal to 0 plus c, which obviously means that c is equal to 0. So now we've been able to resolve, using the special case here of j of t, when t is equal to 0, to be able to resolve our c term within here, and therefore we have a full complete solution for j of t. Okay, so j of t which equals pi over 2 of ln of t plus 1. Now, um, this actually is a better solution, in my opinion, than what we are actually looking for, because this not only will handle the special case that we were dealing with, which is here, i.e. when t is equal to 1, but it deals with all positive t values. So if you want to deal with a more complicated integral, 
this is the one to deal with, but because we are specifically um, looking for the situation when t is equal to 1 for i, we're now going to evaluate this at t is equal to 1. So i, our original integral that we want to solve is j of 1, which equals pi over 2 ln t plus 1, so this is obviously 1 plus 1, which equals pi over 2 ln of 2. And so therefore, i, which is the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of x over 10x, so just remember that from above, this is what we're solving, dx is equal to pi over 2 ln of 2. Okay, so that's all we have for today's video. Um, <clears throat> uh, just, sorry, um, let me continue on. I don't know why I stumbled there a little bit. Um, if you like the video, please like it. Um, if you'd like to see more videos like this, please subscribe. If you have any requests or suggestions or critiques or any sort of feedback whatsoever, please let me know either in a comment on this or um, send me a direct message. Um, to repeat, I take requests, um, so please let me know if you have any, um, and send it through to me or comment here, and if I'm able to solve it, 